Hello, everyone. I am Godiva. Me and Alan knew each other when I was 19 years old. That moment was a series of failures for my future. I was born in a small town in a rural area far from the city. My family had low economic conditions, so I soon had to drop out of school to work to support my family. I got a job at a grocery store and started working in it. Once, when I was cleaning in the store, I met Alan. Dear God, he was very handsome and dressed very well and was very polite. He came towards me. He was a senior in a university in the city. He came here to collect materials for his research before graduating. Alan is looking for some information and wants me to show him how to find it. Of course, how could I refuse to help such a handsome guy? Since then, whenever he needs help, Alan will come to see me. Of course, I will help, and in return, Alan will help me with the grocery store job. I'm glad that my life and work have more of him, and I think I fell in love with Alan. Soon after, Alan graduated, and the first thing he did was confess and say he loved me. God, I'd been waiting for this day for a long time, but right after that fun, Alan made me sad. Alan said that he could not live and work here because it was a poor village. He would work in the city, and he says he does not want to leave me. He wants me to follow him to the city and promise to find me a better job now. I know that my parents would not allow me to go that far, and especially to follow a stranger with them. And so I made a very bold decision that I would run away from home, following Alan to the city. This is crazy, right? I love Alan very much, and I believe that if we are apart, our love will not hold. We are just getting started, and I don't want it to end. So I packed a suitcase to take advantage of the night. Everyone in the house was fast asleep, and I climbed out the door. The journey according to the call of my love officially began. Up to the city, because the money I brought was too little, and Alan had no income, so we could not rent a house to live in. Alan decided to take me home and live with his parents. Although it was annoying, I reluctantly agreed, because there was no other way. However, Alan's mother hated me and was unhappy when I came to stay with Alan's family. But because I loved Alan, I accepted. Me and Alan lived together as husband and wife, but we are not yet a legal couple. A year later, he started a business and rarely came home. His city was quite far away from his family, and so he only returned home once a month. Sometime later, Alan's father had an accident and was bedridden, while his mother had asthma. The amount of hospital fees and daily expenses also increased. The main source of income comes from Alan's family. But where did he go and what to do? What annoyed me is that he always looks very successful and has money every time he comes home. But he does not spend much money to his family. Only a few let me pay and take care of the family. I have to sell jewelry, find work online, and anything that can make money to help him. I think if I live here as a daughter-in-law, then I have to be responsible for his family. And one day when I was cooking, the doorbell rang and Alan's voice rang. I am very happy to welcome him. But no, oh my God, who is here? Alan leads an elegant, beautiful, and charming woman. He ignores my question and went straight to his mother and introduced, This is a wife and children. What? What the hell? I was really shocked. I asked Alan what all this was. He coldly replied, you look at me, both ugly and always boring. Only now did I realize that I had been betrayed by him. Alan was a bad man. I cried, ran into the room to get some clothes and some money, and go on a train, and then left that night. I could not go to my house because I was afraid my parents would scold me. Wandering on the small path with many negative thoughts, I thought about, I suddenly stopped. In front of me is a store. On the wall, there is a poster recruiting employees, and employees can stay in the store if no accommodation. I knew this was my savior, so I knocked on the door and asked to work there. I worked hard and saved a decent amount of money. I was fortunate to meet a good owner who taught me the store business experience. The opportunity came when she wanted to move abroad to reunite with her family. Everything of hers will be sold as well, trusting me plus the money. I have just enough to buy the entire store. I bought and became the owner of that store. As my career developed, I soon had a great fortune and good business relationships, but I was still lonely. I was afraid of being hurt, so I closed my heart to protect myself. A few months ago on my birthday, for some reason, I wanted to drink some beer on my own. I went to the supermarket and bought some beer and snacks. I went to the bridge so that I could enjoy the bitter taste of beer. In particular, there was also a man standing on that bridge looking at him with a thoughtful look and eyes looking towards the lake. His place was quite close to where I was sitting. He wore a suit, but he looked very dirty and ragged. 
Something made me feel close, and I approached the man to talk. I threw him some beer, both silent and drinking, nearly a dozen cans. I rarely drank beer, so I quickly got drunk and left unsteadily. When I got home, I found out someone was watching me. The next day, I continued to buy beer and went to my old place and hoped to see him. Yes, he was still there. We were able to be more open than before. Instead of being silent, we talked to each other to let me know a bit about him. He is William, and he lives wandering because he has no home, no property. When I asked him about the reason, he didn't want to answer and said, Don't ask too much. If you have money, buy me a loaf of bread. I happily bought him a loaf of bread, watching him eat well, and offered to let him be a guard and take care of the garden in my house. My house was once spacious and deserted. Now, with the silhouette of a man, William's appearance made me feel secure. I did not hesitate to allow him to move house and stay in the room right next to my own. He is very thoughtful, managing everything in the house perfectly. We start from friendship. I share about his life. Unexpectedly, at first, he was a successful businessman. But because he believed that you should have been deceived and lost everything. He used to have a wife, and his best friend and wife snuck off together. That is too much for me. Having just lost his wife, broken friendship, bankruptcy of his company, siblings, and no one to help. He sold the company, sold his house, and all his assets to pay off debt. Now we seem to have a connection, sympathy for being betrayed by someone. I also told him what my boyfriend had betrayed me before. We said nothing, but I knew he had me in his heart. One night during a visit to a customer, I drank a bit more and got drunk. For some reason, I had the idea of borrowing alcohol into the wrong room. I pretended to lose consciousness and walked into William. I thought he was asleep. When I walked into the room, I couldn't see him in the room. Suddenly, I heard the door open from the bathroom. A hot scene appeared before my eyes. He just wrapped the bath towel under his body, revealing the attractive six pack muscles. My face turned red and became awkward, but yeast made me more confident. I stepped up and kissed him enthusiastically. William also enthusiastically replied. We fell in love and enjoyed a very hot night. I picked up a six pack hot boy who created the legend one night, seven times. He took me out marriage registration. We didn't need a wedding, and I and he planned to have common children to be happy. When I told you about my thrilling life, I had days of sudden sleepiness and nausea. I feel the change in my body. We will go to the clinic today. Chances are, in eight to nine months, my home will have a young language. What do you think about this story? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.